Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial. And this is the second and final instalment in the series on creating this weird and wonderful contraption. In the first episode we focused on building the bellows piece and the rig for the pump mechanism that we can see here. And we got that working beautifully. In this second instalment we're going to be building the cam that drives all of this and we'll also be using some dynamics to create the piston in this cylinder here or make the piston in this cylinder rise and fall. And of course we'll also add a few more elements such as this coil of tubing here and the cone that sits on the bottom of the, the actual bellows here. That's what we're going to be about in this tutorial. So without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. Before we start, there's a couple of things I just need to sort out that I messed up in the last tutorial. For a start, this subdivision surface is called cam. It shouldn't be. It's not, it's not a cam. <laughs> it's just part of the cam follower. Uh, and cam follower is currently cam follower. So let's make that cam follow. Uh. OK, that's sorted those two out. Moving on from here, then we can get a circle. I'm going to drop this into the cam follower and zero it out on the X and set it to minus 40 in the Y. And then the actual object itself, I'm just going to change its radius to 20. And if we switch to our front view and hit H, we can see that this is in the perfect position to be made into the cam. So in order to do that, we'll hit C to make it editable and switch to point mode. I'll also switch on snapping and in my grid work plane here, I do need that checked on, but I don't need grid line. Select this point and we can see that the grid spacing is five centimeters. So each of the squares is five centimeters. We know that if we move this four squares, we're going to be moving it 20. So let's do that up to there and then down at the bottom, the same thing. One, two, three, four squares. And now we've created the shape of the cam and it's in the perfect position because the bellows are fully expanded and that's the position that they need to be in when we start. So all good. Hit H in the 3D view and F1, of course, to return to our 3D view. Fantastic. So we've got it that far. We can remove our circle from the cam follower. Now let's just hold down the option key and place the circle into an extrude. Much too big, just needs to be 10 in the offset. In the caps, we can give it a rounding of 0.5 and that will work perfectly well for us. And then we can think about what we're doing with this, this circle here. Now, if we just switch the display to wireframe, we can see that at the moment we've only got a few subdivisions around the edge of the cam. Now that will give us a bit of a jerky sort of staccato animation and we don't really want that. So what we've got to do is in our number here, we just need to increase this to 60. And now we've got a far greater number of subdivisions around the edge of the cam and that's going to give us a much smoother animation, which is exactly what we want. So that's fantastic. I mean, you can go a little bit further with that if you want, but don't go too far. I, I would think that 60 is perfectly good. We can now rename the extrude cam because it genuinely is a cam. And in the coordinates, we can just move it minus five in the Z to place it dead in the middle of the cam follower. So that's perfectly good. Moving on from here, we can think about Espresso. So we'll give the cam an Espresso tag and we're ready to start work. The first thing I'm going to bring in is the cam itself. And at the output stage, I'm going to give it an object port. Moving on from here, I'll bring in two null objects and rename them T1 and T2. And again, it's T for target. I'll just bring these down to just above the cam. And what I'll also do, in fact, I think the best thing to do is probably to group them first into the cam follower and zero them out. So they're now in a good position and we can just take them back to where they were. T1, I'm just going to switch to my front view, so F4 once again. T1, I'm going to place 
quite high up inside the cam follower there and T2 I'm going to place just above the center point of the cam itself and that should work okay the next thing to do is to drag both of these in and give them global position ports at the output stage we'll get that done make them a little bigger so that we can see what's going on in them and the next thing to bring in is a ray collision node so we'll get a hold of one of those and connect everything up like so at the moment it's not quite working because we've got an issue with the cam now at the moment the cam is still a parametric object so we need to hit C to make it editable and we need to lose all of these tags because they're not important and then open up again and we find the ray collision is fine because we're now working with a geometric object which is what it works with we now need to add a hit position output port we can't take away the collision that has to stay there so we'll leave that there and finally we need to bring in the cam follower and drop this here and give it a global position port at the input stage connect the hit position and at the moment things are not quite working as they should but that's okay they will so if we just take test only off for a start at the moment it's still a bit all over the place but don't worry it will sort itself out if we go into uh, 3d view already you can see it's actually done so let's just switch the display back to isopalms and now if we get a hold of our cam and rotate it I'll just switch back to model mode just rotate it around its z-axis we can see that this is working beautifully so that's all good that's perfectly fine so our cam is now sorted out now at the moment let's see if we've got a lag problem we don't appear to have do we but let's just uh, we, I think there is a little bit actually and the reason for that is because the cam is actually in the wrong place now the cam needs to be above the pump so place the cam above the pump and we'll also not not in the spigot though let's just place it underneath the spigot so the cams above the pump and we'll also place t1 and 2 just above the cam so that they're with it and the cam follower I'm also going to place that just beneath the cam so ordering is very important here if you're not going to get any lag problems so make sure that you are aware of that that's fine because once we start to sort of use the, the timeline to actually animate this if we animate for a bit and then go back to zero you'll if you don't order things correctly you will get a lag and you'll have to hit this button twice in order to get things to sort themselves out but you don't want to do that uh, but as I say if things are ordered correctly it will all snap back into position at the same time but anyway this is all working beautifully it looks great so that's fantastic right then moving on from here we can add a few more inanimate objects and then we can think about adding the tube with the piston in it and working out our dynamics I'll get a hold of a cone and make it minus y in the orientation its top radius needs to be 2 its bottom radius 18 and its height 25 I'll leave it with 4 height segments and 16 for what it is I will leave that at 16 for the rotation segments I will group this into the spigot and zero it out and then we can just drop it into place by eye so somewhere so look at I'll just swap to the uh, switch to the front view so f4 and hit o for object so that I can see where we are and then all it is is a case of just moving that up by eye until it's about there and that should do fine we can make the, the cone editable I'll just drop it beneath this tube actually and then switch to edge mode and now we can just manipulate it into the shape that we want it to be so 
UL and we'll again I think I'll switch to the front view so I can see what's going on more easily and if we just switch to our scaling tool and we don't want to scale I mean Z but we should be all right if we just do this I think that's okay just bring that in UL I mean you can manipulate this into any shape you want it doesn't have to be done the same as I'm doing it but this is what I've chosen to do with it UL I just felt that this looked quite nice just bring that into there so that it's that kind of a shape I think that's quite nice okay so that's our cone dealt with quite a simple object to manipulate into shape and we can now think about the helical tubing so we need a helix let's bring one of those in it needs to be in the XY plane that's fine start radius needs to be 20 as does the end radius so we'll get those two worked out its start angle needs to be minus 180 720 is fine for the end angle the radial bias is fine the height needs to be 60 and everything else can be left the same so that's perfectly good all we need to do now is just bring it to where it needs to be in the scene so we'll grab this and bring it over here just see where we are again at the moment I'm just working by I'll go into my front view and just see where we are here just to bring this down it wants to be somewhere there I think let's just check yeah it's not far off let's just move it yes it's very nearly where it needs to be go into my right hand view hit H and just bring this across until it's about there that's really good it's in a good position there so that looks as if it's pretty much in position if we just check the top view actually we can see whether or not we've got that right and I think we're well we're pretty much there aren't we again by eye is perfectly good for this I would say that's fine okay so that's a helical tubing on its way to being correct we can just lower it down again you can place this pretty much by eye wherever you like actually but I'll just lower it down that far we can make this editable and go into our points mode and what we've got to do is just add another point on here and we'll have to add another point on here just at each end so we'll reach for our spline pen tool switch to the front view once in fact I think the right hand view would be better yeah switch to the right hand view click on here and click on here hit the escape key click on here and click on here hit the escape key and then in our 3d view we've clearly got to move these points so let's go for our live selection tool select this point and this point and just bring them over here just manip man manipulate them into place that's fine for that one I think yeah that's okay the other one's not so good so let's just get a hold of that go into our front view and then we'll see where we need to position that and it's going to be just here okay great so that is all worked out and looking very nice the only other thing I will do these are a bit harsh here so what I'm going to do is just switch to my front view again so in fact I'll go to my right view again f3 let's just move this if we just pick up this point and just move it up we can then just manipulate the tangents I'll take the snapping off for this just manipulate the tangents until we get a smoother curve in it just to make it look that bit nicer so we just turn that round there and then just move it up to somewhere around there and I think that looks more pleasing on the eye okay so that's okay that's good the next thing to do then is to bring in a circle so we'll get one of those and this just needs to be two in the radius and we can drop the circle and the helix command option and drop those into a sweep and straight away we create our tubing and it looks quite nice it's not quite in the right place because I've just got to move that top point over a little bit I think let's just see where we are 
yeah I mean it just needs to move a little bit on that top point so if we just get our live selection tool get a hold of that move it up to there just move it over a little bit it doesn't have to be perfect I mean if to finish this model off I would probably make um, an actual nut that goes on here and joins the two things together but I'm not doing that because I just you know as I say I'm not going to totally finish the model this is not really a modeling tutorial it's more about the mechanics of the thing but it's just just sort of give you an idea of what you can do with this that's why I'm putting these bits and pieces in there okay I think we'll call that it for the tubing we'll just rename this so that's completely completely ready so we've got tubing on the spigot they're done and that's looking really nice all we've got to do now then is make the pneumatic tube which will have a piston in it that will pop up and deliver a, a little message so that's what we've got to do next I'll bring in another cylinder and we'll make its radius 10 height 20 a single height segment and we'll leave the rotation segments as they are it's in the correct orientation so there's no need to do anything with that just bring this somewhere over here and just raise it up a bit okay we can make the cylinder editable and switch to model mode in fact we'll switch to uh, polygon mode hit O for object and we can hit UL select the bottom polygons and D for extrude set the offset to 2 and then we'll hit the space bar to go back to uh, loop selection and D for extrude again and this time again it will be 2 so we can sort that out and just hit apply and that's all we need to do to create the actual messenger piston so moving on from here then we'll create the pneumatic tube and then we'll look at some dynamics I'll just hit H so that we can see where we are and we'll rename this messenger that'll do okay we need another cylinder and this time we'll give this a radius of 14 and we'll give it a height of 80 I'll group it into the messenger and zero it out remove it from there and then we can just drop this down let's go into our front view so f4 just see where we are position wise yeah that's fine we can see what we're doing so we can just drop this actually beneath the messenger that's where I want to want to position that right so let's take a look at this in, in our 3d view so f1 to go back to there and hit O for object and then we can just change the view so we can see what we're doing the caps I'm going to give it an extra segment because that will be useful to us it's height segments I think we can just we can just have one height segment for this because we can do whatever we need to do after the event when we make it editable so yeah I think that's fine everything else is good so we can make the cylinder editable just make this messenger disappear for a second UL and select edge mode and then we can expand these outwards let's just bring the messenger back yeah that's just outside the messenger there that's good that's good I think that should be fine for us we can now switch to our polygon mode and UL again select this ring and D for extrude and we'll extrude this 20 in fact we may need to go a little bit higher and we'll make it 22 and that's perfectly level with the top that's fine and then the next thing we need to do is actually UL once again and just highlight these polygons and in our select menu here we can say hide selected because what I need to do is KL for a loop cut and I need to make a loop cut here just hit escape to get us out of that tool in fact I'll select the selection the live selection tool to get us out of that okay so we've now got a situation where we can 
actually select this inner loop of polygons and then extrude them out. And that's what we're going to do next. So there in about, I think let's just go to our right hand view and hit O for object. I think that they look perfectly good. I think they're going to work OK. I don't think I'm going to do any more work with those at all, apart from doing the extrude. So let's just do that first to view out again, select all of these and D for extrude and we'll go. We won't go to because we don't want it to be touching the messenger. So we'll go. Let's try 1.6. And that's that looks as if that will work OK. We could go a little bit further, but I think we'll leave it at that. And then from our select menu, show all. And that brings everything back. So that's set up thus far at the bottom of the thing. If we just go down here, what I did, if I let's have a look, I'll tell you what we'll do first. Let's go to our right hand view again. What we'll do is select both of these and position them because they're not properly positioned yet. We need to move them certainly closer to where the actual tubing is. No, I'm just going to model mode. Let's just move these over to where the tubing is and just drop them down a little bit further and then go back to our 3D view. So F1 objects so that we can see where we are. Now, where are they in relation to that? OK, so they need to move along here. So we'll go into our front view just to make sure that we can see where we are with those. Position them somewhere around there. And then once again with this cylinder, what I'm going to do is switch to polygon mode. And UL for loop selection and then D for extrude. And all I've got to do is extrude these by perhaps five. Yeah, that looks good to me. And then once again, what I'll also do is a KL for a loop cut and I'll just put a loop cut here. And then those particular polygons could be removed if needs be. You can just UL to select them and then just take them away. And then all we've got to do is just move the end point of our tubing up inside there and that will finish it off. So let's just go to our tubing, select our helix, points mode and select this point and move it up inside there. And I think that's fine. Again, I'm not going to be too particular about this. I think as long as it's near enough, it's good enough and that's fine. I mean, you're not going to be really looking there. It's being a bit pedantic doing that, really. But that just finishes that off. And that completes the modeling for this. There's no more modeling to do now. From this point onwards, it's Dynamics and Espresso. I'll just do a little bit of housekeeping before we go any further. I'll just move this beneath there and rename this casing. Select them both and then group them into a null and call this Messenger tube for want of a better name. And then we'll drop this down at the bottom of the object list. OK, great. So we're set up so far. I think the thing to do first is set up the dynamics. So we'll do that. Our casing in our tags and our bullet tags here, we can say collider body, select one of those. The dynamics, we don't need to change anything in that tab. Everything is fine. It's the collision that we're interested in. It will be a static mesh. We will use the margin and we'll set it to 0.18. The bounce will set to 5% and the friction 1%. Everything else can stay the same and we can move on from here. The messenger, again our tags, bullet tags, this time a rigid body. We can set inherit tag to none, individual elements to off. The shape needs to be a moving mesh. And once again, we'll use the margin and point, we'll say 1.7, just to give us a little bit of extra leeway. The bounce can stay at 5% and we'll set the friction to 1%. 
that's everything in there set up. We don't need to do anything else. And we finally need to go into our force tab. And in the lift parameter here, we want 0.1%. So a tiny amount of lift. We don't need much. We don't need to worry about two sided because we're not using a flat object. So no problem there. So that pretty much sets up the dynamics for these two objects. The next thing we need to do is hit Command D and we need to do a little bit of work in here. Now, our collision margin, this needs to be set very low. So 0.1, 0.1 centimeters, the scale one centimeter. These two can stay the same. Our steps per frame though will increase to 10 and our maximum solver iterations per step to 20. And that should be fine for us. That should work out okay. So that's the basic dynamics set up. The next thing we need though to make this all work, we need to select our simulate menu, forces, wind. Okay, and we can bring this down to the bottom for what it is and place it just here. Now the wind, for a start, we need to increase the wind speed. I found a sweet spot to be 240. A little bit of turbulence is worth adding, so we'll say 0.14, I think for that, that should be fine, just a small number. The turbulence scale will leave the same and the turbulence frequency 14%. The mode needs to be switched from acceleration to aerodynamics wind. Okay, so theoretically everything is set up. now. You may find that there's a, a difference if you're using a PC. I'm using a Mac, obviously. If you're using a PC, you may need to change some of these values because the dynamics are calculated differently uh, by PCs. I don't know why that is, but Macs and PCs calculate dynamics differently. So you may find these numbers don't quite work and you've got to do a little bit of extra playing around in order to make that happen. But anyway, let's just see what happens when we run the timeline. Well, at the moment, we're not getting anything because the wind is needing to be rotated through 90 degrees so we need to make it so that it's facing upwards make that arrow point upwards let's see what happens now if we go back to zero let's see what happens and now we get the result that we want it pushes the piston up and it stops because the casing prevents it from going any further so that's fine, we've got that working. But let's just do a quick test to make sure that when we stop the wind, it actually falls back down. It should do, it shouldn't be any problem. So what we'll do is set up a quick test in order to get proof of concept. In our wind, we'll come into the basic tab and work with enabled. We'll record it as on at the zero, move through to about 30, check the box off and record again. And let's see what happens now. And it works perfectly. As soon as the wind stops, the object drops back down. That's exactly what we need to see. That's fine. So we can hold down our control key, come into animation here and delete the track. So we've got our proof of concept, which is wonderful. And now we can do a bit more Expresso. I'll select my messenger tube and give this the Expresso tag on this occasion. And then we're ready to start work. The first thing I need to bring in will be the cam. I also need to bring in the root. So I'll bring those two in. And they both need rotation B ports at the output stage. So we'll get those in place. Moving on from here, I initially need two conditions. So I'll bring those two in, or rather, I beg your pardon, I don't need conditions, I need compares, two compares. So I'll bring one of those in and then command drag to copy and set those up there. And the rotation B port can be connected to the input ones of both. So that's set up and ready to go. My top compare will need to be set to greater than in its function. And because we're looking at radians, again, we're looking at small numbers. So this will be 0 0.03. And 
our second compare will be less than in its function and it will be 0 0.5. So we're looking at what the bellows are doing between their points of rotation. So what they're doing when they're between their two states, which are, of course, fully expanded and fully compressed. That's what we're interested in. Moving on from here, we'll command drag another compare and plumb in our rotation B output from, we've got global rotation there actually, let's just remove that and put rotation there. That's what that should be, not rotation. Oh, get it right in a minute. Rotation, rotation B, that's what I want in there. Plumb that into there and this compare will simply be greater than zero. So when our cam has started rotating, basically. The next thing we need is a bool. So we'll bring one of those in. And this is set up fine because its function is AND. And all we need to do is plumb these two into the inputs. So when our bellows is between, well, basically when the bellows, if they're between their maximum and minimum states, the bool will be satisfied and produce a true output. So a one at the output. We can command drag to copy this because we need a second one and we can plumb the output of our compare and the output of our bool in like that. So when all of these conditions are satisfied, this bool is going to give us a true output. So a one at the output. And that's fine. That's what we need it to be doing. Moving on from here, we need the all important node, which is a flip flop. So we're going to bring one of those in. And we're going to plumb the output of this bool into the switch. Now, what this is going to do is make the, the actual flip flop alternate between producing a one and a naught at the output. So a one and a zero at the output. So when this is being pumped, when it's in, in, when it's being compressed, that's when we want the flip flop to be outputting a one. And when it's being expanded, so when it's going the other way, we want this to output a zero because obviously we don't want anything moving here. We want this to pump and then push the actual piston up. And when it's going the opposite direction, we want the piston to drop. And that's what we're setting up with this flip flop. So to finish this off, we need to bring in the wind and in the basic properties, select enabled. And we can then plumb the output of our flip flop into the input. The finishing touch for this is to bring in a time node. And as per usual, I'm going to take away the time port and add a frame port. Place that there. And then what I'm going to do next is get another compare. So I will command drag to copy this one. Set the function to equal to and leave everything else as it is. Plumb the output of the frame into the input and then plumb the output of this compare into this off switch. So this makes sure that the flip flop is set up at the beginning of the animation as we need it to be in order for it to function correctly. So that we don't go out of sync. I mean, if we didn't do that, you'd find that this would be expanded and then this would be moving up and down, you know, moving up when it shouldn't be. So you've, that's why I'm doing this. That's why that compare is there. It's, a, it's an error trap basically, and it stops things from going wrong. So that's the finished expression for controlling the wind. Basically, that's what we're going to be doing there. We're going to be switching the wind on and off at the correct times with this expression. Now, in order to make this work, I mean, nothing's going to happen at the moment if we play the timeline because our cam isn't moving. So if we come back up to our cams expression here, what we can do is give this a rotation B port at, oh, I've done global rotation again. I just want a rotation B port. Transform rotation B. I just need that at the input stage. And then in my system presets, I'm going to go into animation and time 
and select rotate. And for those of you who've not seen my tutorial on the rotate node, essentially it functions in the same way as an electric motor and I can plumb this into the rotation B port. Now, in one, div one divided by S here, this is effectively the speed control and I need to give this 0.25 in there. That needs to be 0.25, otherwise it will be rotating too fast. Now let's see if we've done this right. Let's just see what happens when we play the timeline. Yep. Yeah. Looking good. Okay, we need some more frames, so we'll give this 240 frames. And let's see what we get. And you can see that that's pumping exactly as we needed to. Yeah, and it loops, it's all perfect. And I like the fact that that piston is dynamic because it just wobbles. You can see that when it gets to the top, it's not 100% perfect. It sometimes is, but other times it just wobbles about. And that just makes it more, more alive. I just think that's great. That's what I like about dynamics. Fantastic. I mean, it's difficult to achieve that with keyframe animation or even Expresso, really. Um, you know, it really is great. But there you go. That's the finished project. So you can see how it all works. Now, let's just have a quick recap. What we've got, we've got to look at the ordering. Let's just close the cam follower up and the pump. Well, actually, we'll leave the pump open because it's got, it does have an Expresso expression in it. We'll close the bellows and we'll close the messenger tube. So you can see the order, the cam first, that's gonna be the thing that's animated first or calculated first. The follower is, it doesn't have any express or expression, it just takes its position via this expression. The pump here, we've got the IK expression in it. We follow that up with the expresso expression that's taking the root and using that roots and um, its roots rotation B to pump the bellows basically because it's changing the end angle of the arc. So that's second in terms of espresso. It's third in terms of calculation really, but it's second in terms of espresso. And we come to the bellows next, so they're calculated third. And then finally, the messenger tube. It's not really the messenger tube, is it? It's the wind. We could, we could effectively drop that onto the wind because really the wind is the thing that's being driven by this expression. But that's how you do it. And then of course the dynamics are in here and they're effectively last in the chain. But that's how it's done. That's how you order that. That's how you set it up. Now, what we can do is group everything into a null. So we can select all of this, hit command or rather option G and rename this rotational bellows contraption. And now we can move it anywhere in the scene because we're using global positions and it will just work. So we can place it wherever we like and run the timeline and away it goes. Beautiful. And the final thing I suppose we can do is add a texture to the actual messenger here. I did do that, so perhaps we can have a quick look at it. We'll just make the casing invisible so that we can see the messenger on its own. Double click in here to make a texture. In the color, we need a spline from the effects menu, bring that in. And we need a text spline and we will put just put EM in there for Expresso Mechanic on this occasion. You can put your own initials in there or anything you want to put in there, but I'll put that in there. The font, I will make copper plate because that's the font I use for my logo. So let's just get that in there. Copper plate, just down here. There we go, copper plate. So that's in there. And then we just need to set a few things up in here. So the X offset should be 46. The Y, 69, and the X scale, 25. The, the Y scale can be left at 100. The line width, 
it should be 10 percent so to make that smaller and then we can think about doing a few other things bump width i think i just set that to zero and i center aligned everything else i think i think it's left the same the background texture i used a color and i set it to something like that that will be okay for that and then the fill texture we need to check fill and we need to use fill color and the fill texture i used again a color and oops i don't want that cancel that don't want that at all fill texture i used a color i just put color in there that's it that's what i want in there and this was a darker blue so something like that would do okay i think something like that that'll be okay it doesn't really matter i mean you can do whatever you, if you like as i say so that's our texture pretty much set up and it's not perfect but it's adequate for our purposes here now what i did with the messenger i went into polygon mode again ul for a loop selection and selected this and stored the selection and then when we drop this on it is ready to go because we just need to drag this selection in here and then we've got to set up the mapping and i did it as a cylindrical map let's just take a look at what's going on with the object at the moment it's not the correct size and it's not in the correct position so what we need to do is switch to our texture mode and we need to make this a little bit just make this a little bit further away so we can see what's going on but at the moment it's not correct so let's have a look and see where we are we just need to say fit to object and now i think we're just about in business let's just see where we are yeah it's it's the correct size it's definitely the correct size but at the moment it's needing to be rotated so we just need to bring it round to the front if we can and that's it just round to the front there let's have a look see where we are i don't think that's too far off where it needs to be let's just go to our right hand view let's hit h and garage shading and yeah i mean i think that's that's not too bad that's pretty good i think i'll, I'll settle for that actually so that's all i need to do there and then we can bring the, the casing back and now when we run our simulation we're getting our message displayed on our piston and that's essentially how you do it that completes the tutorial that's how you go about making this weird and wonderful machine and there you go there it is so as always i really hope you've enjoyed this short series of tutorials and i've certainly had a lot of fun bringing them to you it's been a, an absolute joy so if you have then please give the video a like and of course if you haven't already then please subscribe to the channel leave a comment and ring the bell and wherever you happen to be on social media then please please do share this video because all this good stuff really does help keep the channel moving in the right direction but anyway that about brings the curtain down on this one so i really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial oh actually though there's one last thing i'd quite like to show you I'm just going to switch to this file because if you're really into this stuff this is what you do you create a pair of them now all i've done here really i've just copied the cam i've copied the pump mechanism the pistons and of course the bellows but the helical tubing well that was a different story i needed the copy to be a mirror image of the original so i used a symmetry object I actually did this first so that it was easy to move everything into place and get it all to match up perfectly. Obviously the, the two cams, they're not in sync with each other. One is 90 degrees out of sync with the other cam so that we get this motion. So when the E is up, the M is down and vice versa. And there's a little bit of difference in some of the mathematical calculations within the WINS Expresso expressions, but nothing too major. But that's all you've got to do in order to do something like this. So that's a bit of a challenge for you. Let's see if you can 
see how I did this and maybe do one for yourself, maybe create one of these yourself. But anyway, that's all I wanted to show you as a grand finale. <laughs> and that really does bring the curtain down on this short series of tutorials. So I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.